Hey, trucked up guys and gals. So what did GM just do? First, I'll give you the juicy details, and then we're gonna get into the weeds to why this could be the end of America's biggest auto manufacturer for decades. Stay tuned to the end, especially if you're buying GM stock. Here it is. Good old Mary Barra announced that they would be scaling back all of their EV vehicle production plans and also scaling back their cruise division for self-driving. And one of the things that they cited was the labor contract disputes that were settled and them having costs increased by $10 billion. We just can't move ahead with EV division with such a cost. But on the same day, Mary Barra, CEO of GM, also announced a $10 billion stock buyback for shareholders, which will result in a 33% increase in the dividend payout. I think there may be a priority issue here. Now, of course, GM stock has struggled. Ford's doing something similar. They're also scaling back their EV production. And here's the reason why that's happening. It's not that there's not EV demand. They're wanting to slow it down for a little while because they need to come out with their EVs and have high volume right out the gate. Because they're legacy automakers, they can't just switch because all of their profits are made on the internal combustion side. And until you get to scale, like Tesla discovered in the early 2010s, when they were first ramping up, when they were getting to that Model 3 and they went through production hell, they had to go through this huge process and it was costly and painful and they barely survived it according to Elon Musk, they were within 24 hours of bankruptcy, but they were able to get financing. Now picture the legacy automakers who are in the same dilemma. They're trying to navigate the waters by trying to slow down EV adoption so they can transition and then they can get their lines that they do have for EVs to a scale that means they're not losing as much money to make that transition. The reality is it's not gonna work. And the reason it's not gonna work is because you and everybody else is really considering EV trucks or on the EV car side. The demand is doing nothing but going up. As we're about to find out with the Cybertruck, even though it looks like a refrigerator had sex with a door wedge, it looks like it's gonna be a capable truck. And if people decide that it is, and based upon the lineups, it looked like a Black Friday blitz at every single Tesla sales office. There were lineups all day long just to see a Tesla Cybertruck in the Tesla sales showroom, like all day long. This wasn't like a new iPhone launch back in the 2010s again. This is for an electric truck. So there is massive pent up demand for these things and a huge wait list. They're not gonna be able to transition because soon the Chinese will be coming with a truck and Toyota might wake up. If anybody does, they're done because they can't possibly catch up. They can't slow down or manipulate the market. If the market wants something, it's gonna find a way to get it and market forces will drive that. The reality is they have to make that painful choice when they have the profits to do it. And that's now. They're making record profits and they know the future looks bleak on that front. So what they're trying to do isn't a sensible thing to do because take the hit now, invest the money now, get the plants ready to produce these EVs that are in demand and growing by the day and be able to compete. That's a huge investment. Tesla already made that investment. Tesla already went through the pain and didn't have the burden of hundreds of billions of dollars of legacy infrastructure that's just basically a write-off within five years from now. This could be the end because I don't think they're going to be able to come out the other side. When those profits start falling on their other division, which they will, they're not going to have the capabilities to get themselves out of the quagmire they're putting themselves into. Thanks for watching. Always glad to have you along for my rants. Please, please, please like and subscribe. It means so much to a little channel like mine. And if you're interested, I've got a coffee and flat tire fund. And oh yeah, when you're driving a 6,800 pound beast in the backwoods, I might need the flat tire fund. So thank you for all your support. We'll talk to you soon.